Welcome to the Madlib and Simulink Pass Competitions Hub. Today we are going to be covering how to use virtual worlds so that you can get started programming robots without the need of hardware. Uh, in the agenda for today, we have an introduction to the Robotics Playground. The Robotics Playground is our Simulink library that contains the virtual worlds that you can use to get started using Simulink and Stateflow to upload algorithms uh, to these virtual robots and also to move on to programming real robots from there. Uh, we're going to cover the library installation into MATLAB. Uh, then we're going to create some simple models to get acquainted with the blocks within the library. Uh, we're going to go through some resources so that you can do more advanced applications with this library. And finally, we're going to conclude this video with some key takeaways. The Robotics Playground is a Simulink library of blocks that will contain a differential drive robot, like the one you can see in the video. Uh, you can drive basically each wheel and you can move the robot around and use sensors to program different type of behavior, such as solving a maze, avoiding obstacles, interacting with other robots. And you can also do this using MATLAB commands. Uh, so we are gonna cover how to install this toolbox right now. And then you can explore all the examples contained within the toolbox. That brings us to the software demonstration, which means that now we're gonna actually install this toolbox in MATLAB and Simulink and get started with it. In order to install the Robotics Playground toolbox in MATLAB, you're gonna to wanna to open up your latest version of MATLAB. And if you don't have a version of MATLAB yet, uh, make sure to check out the description of the video where you will find a link to your specific student competition page where you can request a complimentary license for your team. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to go to your MATLAB version and then click on the add-ons button on the tool strip. The add-on explorer will show up and you're gonna type robotics playground in the search bar and hit enter. And here you will see the file exchange submission for the robotics playground virtual worlds. You're gonna click there and then you're gonna click on the add button. Once you agree to the license agreement, it will start installing the toolbox. And once you see the buttons open folder and manage, the toolbox have been successfully installed. Once you've installed the toolbox, you will notice that if you go to your apps tab in MATLAB, you will see another app called Robotics Playground with the Robotics Playground icon. You're gonna to wanna to click on that to get started. That will open the Robotics Playground app and this app will help you navigate through all of the resources available within this toolbox. Uh, we are gonna start by opening the library. So go ahead and click the open library button on this application. Once the Robotics Playground library opens, you will see all of the available environments, sensors, and utilities. Uh, we are gonna go ahead and create a new model. So we are gonna click on the new model button here in Simulink, and that's gonna bring a blank canvas. Now that we have both our library and our blank model, we're going to start dragging blocks into the blank canvas to program a robot in a virtual environment. First, we're going to go inside the environment subsystem, double click, and then we're going to pick the obstacle environment. We're going to drag this environment over to the blank canvas. Notice that you should only use one of these environments per Simulink model. Then we're going to go to the basic sensors and actuators, double click, and then we're gonna drag two of the robot motors. Notice that all of the robotics playground blocks have what's called a robot ID on the top right hand corner of the blocks. You wanna make sure that these robot IDs match for one environment. So in this case, if you double click on the obstacle environment, you will see all of the options available for this block, uh, such as the obstacle settings, the arena settings, the length and width, and the robot settings. In the robot settings, you will see the robot ID. So you can change this number to be two or three, depending on if you have more than one robot. But for this particular example, we're gonna leave it as ID one. If you wanna set the obstacles for this arena, you're gonna wanna click on the set obstacles button and say how many obstacles you want to set. In this case, I'm going to say three. And we're going to get a um, 
plot with an image of the arena where we can set the obstacles. Now I'm going to drag some squares across the screen to place the obstacles that I want. And once I'm done dragging three squares in this case, then the obstacles have been set and I can go ahead and click OK. Now in order to drive these motors, uh, I am going to send them a signal and for that we're going to type click on the simulant canvas and we're going to type constant. And you can click enter. Now we're going to connect this constant to the robot motor number one. We're going to copy this by click, holding down the control key and dragging that constant block. And then we're going to connect that to the second motor. If we double click on one of these motors, you will see that the motors have a robot ID and a motor number. We, in this case, uh, one motor will correspond to the left motor and the other motor will correspond to the right motor. So we're going to have to change one of these motors. Um, so we're going to go to the second motor and we're going to change the motor number to 2. And now we're going to set the constant value to a higher number, something like 60, for both of these motors. And then we can go ahead and run this model. When you run your Simulink model, the Mechanics Explorer will pop up in a separate window. And the Mechanics Explorer is the place where you're going to see your 3D environment. Uh, right now, we don't see much. We only see a green bar. So we're going to rotate the arena by using the middle mouse click and dragging. And now we can see the full 3D environment and we can zoom in and out as we want. And we can see that the obstacles have been placed exactly where we placed them uh, within the block. If you want to modify the views, you can use some of the tools available within the tool strip of the Mechanics Explorer. You can use the Mechanics Explorer to run the simulation using the green run button on the left hand side of the toolbar. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click that. And you will see how the robot right now will start moving forward. And right now it will start moving forward for 10 seconds. If you want to change the stop time of your simulation, you're going to want to go back to your Simulink model. And this box right here in the toolbar is the stop time of the model. So if you want it to run indefinitely, you can use infinite or INF, or you can set a different stop time like 20 seconds. That is it for creating a model with the robotics playground. Now we're going to see what other resources are available within the application that we just saw. Since we only went through one environment, you can use the application to navigate through the other available environments, which are uh, the object environment, the sumo game, and the MATLAB robot. The MATLAB robot is a way for you to use MATLAB commands uh, to programmatically access the robot. So you can set the wheel speeds, you can access sensors from MATLAB commands, and you can use this to create your own textual scripts and practice programming robots this way. Uh, right now, we're going to open up the documentation. If you open up the documentation, you're going to be able to see all of the description of what the robotics playground is. And if you have any questions about any of the sensors, you can read in detail about how the sensors work and what are the parameters available within the block. And that brings us to the end of the software demonstration for the robotics playground toolbox. Now we're going to move onward to the key takeaways. Um, you can use this toolbox to program robots without the need of hardware. So if you are part of a student competitions team where you're split up into groups where some students are uh, building the hardware and some students are programming the hardware, this is going to be of great use to you. If you haven't used Simulink to program robots in the past and you're trying to learn Simulink for robotics programming, you can also use these virtual environments to test your code. Uh, you can also run simulations before you upload code to hardware, and this is going to be useful so that you can verify basic behavior of the robot without damaging any hardware. 
Uh, and finally, if you are thinking about programming actual hardware like VAX, LEGO, Arduino, and any other simulation supported hardware, this is a great place to start to get some visual feedback on the algorithms you are developing, and then you can use the respective simulation libraries to upload to the hardware you desire. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at our email address, passcompetitions at mathworks.com, or through our Facebook group.